The first feature is related to customer prepayments and now you have the ability to receive prepayments and record them right on the sales order. And the best thing is that QuickBooks will record it in a current liability account instead of a current asset account. But the thing is, before we start accepting customer prepayments on sales order, we need to activate that option. And for that, from edit, select preferences. And in the payments tab, company preferences. Activate the prepayments option. The prepayment from the customer is an advanced payment from the customer. So you need to record it as an unearned revenue or deferred revenue. And the most important distinction between revenue and unearned revenue is that you still owe the service to the customer and so you have to save that amount as a current liability and not an asset so to record these transactions we have to create a separate account a new account by the name of unearned revenue account create a new account to record the prepayments make sure it is set as a current liability account fill in the account number name and description and save and close the account setting Confirm changes by clicking on OK. So here's a quick overview of the workflow. You start off by activating the option, the feature, then you create a sales order and receive the customer prepayment on it. When you create an invoice, you have an option to apply the prepayment as a customer credit so that you can lower the total amount that the customer owes to you on that particular invoice. Let's check it. And to do that, I go to the customers menu and select create sales order. Choose the appropriate customer, enter the required items and update their quantity based on the customer's order. Save the sales order. Click on the new receive payment option within the sales order. Confirm by selecting OK. Choose the date of payment and the amount to apply to the sales order. Select the payment method and enter the check number if applicable. Include a memo for the customer prepayment and then save and close. Navigate to reports, customers and receivables. Open customer prepayments by customer report. When we record customer prepayments, it is very important for us to record that amount and keep track of it so that we can apply the customer credits on the next invoice. And for that, QuickBooks has the new open prepayments by customer report. This report is only available when you activate prepayments in QuickBooks desktop and it generally shows you all of the prepayments that you have not actually applied to any invoice or sales receipt for any of the customers in your company file. Visit the trial balance to check the unearned revenue account balance. And in the trial balance, we can see that the amount in the unearned revenue account has increased. And the most important thing is we can double click on that account on the value and find out more information about the transactions recorded in that particular account. But what actually is happening behind the scenes? How is QuickBooks actually recording these transactions and handling customer prepayments? We can find that out with the journal report. I'll set up filters to find the transaction report. Record the customer prepayment. QuickBooks simply debits the undeposited funds account and credits the unearned revenue account increasing the balance in both of those accounts and for the final part of the workflow we simply apply that prepayment on an invoice that we create for this customer and for that i'll press ctrl i to launch a new invoice select the sales order available to convert into an invoice quickworks will notify you about the available customer credits choose the amount of prepayments to apply to this invoice Save and close. QuickBooks will notify you that once you apply a prepayment as a credit on an invoice, you cannot reverse that. So you need to proceed cautiously in this case. When we go back to the journal report and look at the customer prepayments and how they have been handled till now, we can see a lot of interesting things going on. When we first recorded customer prepayments in QuickBooks desktop, it stored the amount in undeposited funds account and the liability amount was stored in the unearned revenue account that we created to track the prepayments. When we applied the prepayment to the open invoice that we created later, QuickBooks took the funds from the unearned revenue account and transferred it to the accounts receivable account. And when we applied the customer prepayment to the open invoice in QuickBooks, it simply took the amount out of the unearned revenue account and put it in a dummy account, which is the prepayments account 
and then from there it transferred the prepayments to the accounts receivable account and finally it recorded the income and accounts receivable transaction as one single journal and when we review the trial balance the balance in the unknown revenue account is now zero and when we deposit the check into the bank account we can use the make deposit option to record this transaction head over to the list menu and select the item list need to be cautious whenever you are working with customer prepayments because once you apply the prepayment on an invoice you cannot reverse it so be very cautious and always create a backup of your company file whenever you get the time for it all of these new features are going to mess up the organization of our data with that we come to our next feature which is category enhancements which will basically help you in categorizing your item details so that you can later analyze and organize your data better add a new category enter a category name mark it as a subcategory if applicable then save back in the uncategorized section mark the items that you want to assign a category to go to batch actions and move to a new category select the category and it's done quickly create a new category and assign a few items to it the whole point of categorizing transactions and list items is better analysis of your data so let us look at some of the key reports that we can use to analyze the transactions and list items according to item categories i'll go to the inventory valuation summary report and set the date range then go to customize reports add a column to display item category and apply a category filter i can select a single category or multiple categories as the filter option for this report it will mostly depend on your mood no it will mostly depend on the items that you want to include in the report upon applying the filter i get a list of the items that meet the criteria I can then use the memorize feature to save this report template making it easier for me to recreate this report later and you can use category enhancements in all sorts of inventory reports and once you have set up all of the categories for items you can use the price rules by category option to automate the pricing process for different item categories go to preferences sales and customers advanced pricing activate price rules and then hit okay Then head over to the price rule list. Create a new price rule. Enter a name for this rule. Keep it active or make it inactive. Input a description. Click on the plus icon to add a new rule. So if the item has category awesome and the date of the transaction is between this date range. then set the price lower or higher you can set up custom price for the items if it doesn't require relative pricing and then save the price rule i'll press control i to create a new invoice select the customer choose a date that falls in the date range for the price rule enter the items and update the quantities And finally QuickBooks has also introduced the ability to quickly and easily search using item categories as a filter option. Enter the value in the look for field and select category as the field to look into. You can perform a broader search and then search within the results for that search by marking this option. These search enhancements are directly related to the category enhancements. in the new desktop software another amazing option that we have now is to use lot numbers to track our inventory items lot numbers basically help you track and group items that belong to the same batch so let's say if the items all expire on a single date you can use lot numbers to group them together head over to preferences inventory advanced and enable lot or serial numbers 
then save the changes. Market as an inventory part. Enter rest of the details. Select the lot number option. QuickBooks gives a warning by default, but you can make the field mandatory. Save and close. You have received the items from the vendor and now you can create sales order and use the lot number to track the inventory items. Let's get these items in stock. Receive the item. Select the vendor, then item and its details. Enter the same lot number. QuickBooks gives a warning if you forget. Save and close. Create a new sales order. Select the customer, the items and update the quantity. Then save and close. Users often complained about the inability to track inventory items and to analyze the item details using lot numbers. So Intuit has introduced a few key reports that will help you find out the amount of stock that you have according to the lot number of each of the items. In inventory reports, you have a new report available. Inventory stock status by lot number. This report shows me three things. Quantity on hand, quantity on sales order, which is the part that the customer has booked. And lastly, the difference of the first two, which is quantity available. The number that you should look at when ordering items from your vendors. I can also track the expiration date for inventory items. So let's say if a batch of products expires on the same date, I can track that using lot numbers. And for that, you need to have advanced inventory switched on and you need to configure some of the options such as the same lot number for the same batch. Intuit has also improved the security features for QuickBooks desktop. So now QuickBooks supports 256-bit encryption, which is the industry standard, even used by the US military to encrypt their files and servers. And this can be especially useful for users who deal with very sensitive data related to customers and clients and i'll also recommend that you keep backing up your data using intuit data protect in order to safeguard your data from viruses malware and just regular old damage if you want to install or upgrade to the latest version of quickbooks desktop then check out this video on how to install and upgrade to quickbooks desktop 2024